Last week, I put forward some theories we've come up with stemming from the recent discovery of dried ghasts in the Soul Sand Valley. In that broadcast, I briefly mentioned the Nether Ice Age theory and that it wasn't the preferred theory of our research institute. Personally, I don't buy it, but it turns out a lot of people do, to such a point it seems that many regard it simply as absolute fact, when in reality it's just a theory. But anyway, a ton of people treat it as basically canon, so I thought, have I got it wrong? Well, it's complicated. But today we're going to re-examine the Nether Ice Age theory and discuss some of the evidence used to support it. Let's begin. As a disclaimer, we won't be covering the ancient builders in this video as they are a whole separate topic of their own. The goal is to keep this episode relatively condensed and pretty geological. As far as I can tell, the only hard observable evidence cited for the Ice Age theory relate to nether geology, and as the institute's resident geologist, I feel well qualified to speak on it. Really, there are only two claims made as evidence, first being the texture of soul soil. MatPat claims these stripes are glacial scour lines formed when a glacier migrates across the land. As a geologist, I was pretty impressed by this claim. Someone certainly did their research. However, I do not believe that these are scour lines or glacial striations. First of all, this is dirt, soul soil. Glaciers weigh millions of tons. Scour lines are carved into solid rock, while surface deposits are completely obliterated. The striations are actually formed by the ice mass working the rocks and surface materials across the bedrock like sandpaper. So unfortunately, you just wouldn't see glacial striations in dirt. Not scientifically possible! You might be tempted to think that soul soil is strong enough to resist glacial forces, but it can be broken by hand. It's dirt. The waving texture is interesting, and we believe there's an alternate answer. Looking at a bunch of soul soil together, there's this repeating ripple pattern. Scour lines can't form in loose material, but ripple patterns certainly can. Everyone's seen them, in sand dunes or the beach, and sometimes ancient ripples can even be preserved in rock. Ripples form from two primary sources, which I've already hinted at, wind and water. Aha, you might say, water, so that proves it. To which I would say, slow your roll, bucko. There are two types of ripple marks, for our purposes, symmetrical and asymmetrical. Under the right conditions, either source can form either type. Generally, water forms symmetrical ripples from the oscillatory motion of waves. The soul soil ripples are asymmetrical, that is, they appear to have a directional flow. It's possible that shallow flowing water could create asymmetrical ripples, but this rules out the possibility of large bodies of standing water, which would have existed during the transition period of glacial melt. Either way, since soul soil is a dry and loose material, it probably wouldn't preserve ripple marks formed from water long ago. That leaves wind as the most likely source, which often results in asymmetrical patterns. But how do we know there's wind in the nether? One word, humidity. Humidity refers to the amount of water vapor in the air. Hang on a sec, water in the nether? Well sure, not liquid water, but the nether supports life, so there has to be water in some capacity. Unless nether life isn't water based, but that's a whole different debate. Anyways, the different nether biomes do in fact have different humidity values, with the soul sand valley having the lowest. Quick aside, this could be the reason ghasts dry out here since the air is devoid of moisture. As humidity increases, air pressure tends to decrease, giving the soul sand valley a higher air pressure relative to the biome surrounding it. Air wants to move from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure, thereby creating wind. This is the most likely cause of the ripple marks in soul soil. Just in case anyone was wondering about the temperature values, here they are. Now, the second and main piece of evidence used for the Ice Age theory, basalt deltas. This one is more subject to interpretation, but there is some scientific information I want to clear up. Basalt is an igneous rock formed from cooling lava, yes. However, it does not form exclusively from rapid cooling as stated in Game Theory's summary. Columnar basalts are real, and they are very cool. But to say they form from rapid cooling is not entirely accurate. Basalt columns, which these definitely are, are one of several types of basalt that form under different conditions. Let's look into it. Basalt, or massive basalt, is closest to smooth basalt in game. It's like the default, basically. Small grain size, homogeneous texture, formed from relatively quick cooling. Now hold on, I know what I said, but there's a difference between rapid cooling and instant cooling. When lava encounters a mass of ice, the temperature difference is usually so great it just straight up explodes. This steam-powered blast is called a phreatic eruption. Another type of basalt, pillow basalts, are commonly formed in the ocean floor when lava encounters seawater, like this. 
The formation of any basalt results from rapid cooling, but a key to column forming is thought to be differential cooling, with colder temperatures on top and warmer temperatures on the bottom, like water flowing over top of lava as it cools. Cold on top, hot on bottom. It's the differential temperature cooling that causes the rock to contract and crack in this hexagonal pattern. Here's the problem. That's real life. In game, you need blue ice to craft basalt. So in a way, it really depends on what you place more value on, game mechanics or real world science. By mechanics alone, you could conclude that there had to be ice, but we don't know 100% that ice is required for basalt to generate naturally in Minecraft, but potato potato at that point. Anyway, the Ice Age theory was made predominantly based on those two claims. I hope at the very least I've convinced you that it's not the slam dunk everyone acted like it was. However, I must admit, still technically possible. Now, after examining everything preparing this video, there is admittedly good evidence for nether climate change, so I'd like to present an alternate theory. Plenty of people have pointed to Mojang saying that the basalt deltas are linked to a nether disaster. The basalt deltas of the nether are a great match to volcanic traps, also known as Large Igneous Provinces, or LIPs. These are formed by long-lasting eruptions and lava flows that cover huge areas of Earth, like whole continents. And by long-lasting, we're talking millions of years of non-stop pop. The two most notable examples in history are the Siberian Traps and the Deccan Traps. These events are devastating. The Siberian traps are thought to have been the primary cause of an event called the Great Dying, the biggest mass extinction event in Earth history where 90% of species were lost. Let me say that again, 90% of all life on Earth died. Anyway, trap eruptions produce what we call flood basalts, like a tsunami, but lava. Well, columnar basalts are a common feature when these floods cool. I've even got some right here at home. Scientifically, it all checks out. The basalt deltas are likely flood basalts. So what did the nether look like before? First of all, it's a cave, and a lot of people like to say that the nether is a closed system. It can't really be, because if there was no lava before the nether traps eruption, it had to come from somewhere. Also, the nether is completely encased in bedrock, which I believe is actually gabbro. Watch my short on that. Gabbro is the intrusive counterpart of basalt, forming from the same lava. Is the gabbro cage around the nether related to the traps, or has it always been there? I don't know. While it may not be a perfect closed system, the nether is certainly an enclosed space. It begs the question, could you even sustain snow and ice in here? I think it's more likely that the nether was once a lush tropical region. No glaciers, but still a paradise. But the ghast eats snowballs. The ghast likes snowballs. Which are water. The ghast doesn't need snow to survive or grow. It needs water. Liking ice cream doesn't guarantee a person comes from a snowy climate. Also, the Siberian traps covered 2% of Earth's surface and sent 90% of life to the great beyond. The nether traps cover 15% of the dimension, which is not a wide open planet, but a cave. That would have to be 99.9% .9 extinction rate at a minimum. Only the most adaptable and extremophile life would be able to survive that. Anything evolved for or well adjusted to a cold and icy environment, they just aren't gonna make it. It's possible for new stuff to evolve and recover post-disaster, but full ecological recovery takes millions of years. We can't be more than a few thousand years post-basalt flow. There's still lava everywhere, and the flood deltas themselves are still very molten. We're straying beyond the original scope of this video, but I'm sure some people are wondering, so I'll throw in a little speculation. Previously I said that netherrack might be meat, watch my short on that. Really that was just entertaining speculation, but what if it's not? The primary foundational life of the modern nether is fungus. Mojang have said as much. And jokes aside, there is at least some evidence that netherrack really is flesh. Well, flesh-like. There are plenty of mushrooms and fungus that closely resemble meat and even taste like it. Look at the textures of blackstone and netherrack. They're almost identical. Besides basalt, the deltas have no netherrack, just blackstone, which was probably the main block the original nether was made of. Large masses of it still remain in the deltas at ground zero because nothing survived, not even the most well-adapted life. Elsewhere in the nether, this extremophile fungus would have inherited a world empty of competition. Adapted to extreme environments, this fungus could break down blackstone and metabolize the minerals within, eventually infesting and replacing the entire block. Unmitigated, it would continue to spread and diversify, becoming the nether's most dominant life form. This also ties back to our portal corruption theory, suggesting that corruption is not related to magic at all, but purely a biological process, occurring only when portals are open, like many suggested. 
Time to wrap this up though. In conclusion, the most likely climate of the pre-trap nether is tropical, hot and humid. Life adapted to these conditions would have the best and probably the only chance to survive the floods. If there really is a secret canon, I'm confident this is it. But without Mojang's confirmation, it's still all just a theory. A game theory. Unfortunately, I'm in too deep at this point. More nether biology and science is sure to come. Anyways, what do you guys think? Thanks so much for watching and till next time.